Israel. Everyone wants to know what you're doing. Everybody's interested in how you doing what you're doing. Why is it that every every na every nation, as I was just explaining, speaking with my wife earlier, every nation copies our swagger. Mm -hmm. They all do. You're here in Russian. You hear it in, in French, Portuguese, Spanish, Chinese, Korean, what up? How you doing? It's true. They will do that. They will copy how you walk, your swagger, your dress, your style, yes. even the way they, listen, every country now raps. When yes. did they rap? Yes. I need you to understand just how important you are to the status quo of this world that the Father has made for you. The scripture says that this world was made for your sake. Right, let me quickly just find that. In fact, um, let's go to 2 Ezra chapter 7 and let's read from verse 11 real quick before we get into the lesson. This here is in the Apocrypha is on page 21. 22. 22, 7 and 11. Because for their sakes I made the world. See? Go on. And when Adam transgressed my statutes, then was decreed that now is done. So he made the world for our sakes. He makes it very clear. Now, if, if again, if there's a struggle in anyone's mind, but did he make the world for our sakes? If he made the world for our sakes, what is the problem then? Quickly jump over to chapter um, 6 and read verse 51, uh, 59. This, the book, uh, this is Edris, chapter 6 and 59. It reads, If the world now be made for our sake. See, there it is again. He just done told you that he made it for you, did he not? Uh -huh. And now, it, now the question of if comes about. Go on. Why do we not possess an inheritance with the world. Go on. How long shall this endure? See, we can't have a, a, a possession with the world, with the other people, because it has been spoken by the Most High that we are to be the heads and the other nations are to be the tail. Right now, we are the tail. We are the thing that, that waggers involuntarily. Does that make sense to you so far? Um, All right. Let's get into the lesson. I want to give all grace and peace to the Most High God and to all of our brethren, those who are watching from near and far. I want to say to you, Rokatai, we give all praises to the Most High God for, for all that he has done for us in the weeks of, of past and in the ensuing weeks ahead. We're going to uh, go into a teaching it might be a bit long for this session, but we're going to do what we can. Um, let's go, if you please, to um, let's go to Ezekiel real, really quick. We touched the Ezekiel on on the Sabbath. Let's go back there, Ezekiel chapter thirty-seven. Let's read. I'm going to move a little bit quickly, but you can slow me down if you choose. And I am open to questions. This is an open gallery, and, and the, the questions that you will ask may help others who are listening and watching. Let's read. Yes, sir. This is the book of Ezekiel, chapters 37 and 1. The hand of the Lord was upon me and carried me out in the spirit of the Lord and set me down in the midst of the valley, which was full of bones. Jump to 3. Verse 3, and he said unto me, Son of man, can these bones live? Can what? Can these bones live? Can Israel live again? Go on. And I answered, O Lord, Yahweh, thou knowest. Again he said unto me, Prophecy upon these bones, and say unto them, O ye dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. All right, let's stop there. So, this uh, statement was made to Israel in its dead state. We're, many of us are still dead. Many of us are still asleep. Many of us are still not walking according 
to the laws, statutes, and commandments. Let's run back, if you please, and let's begin the teaching. Let's go to Isaiah, the book of Isaiah, chapter 29, if you please, and we're going to begin reading from verse 9. All mobile phones, please switch them off or switch them down or mute them. Then, spoke too soon. All right, so Isaiah chapter 29, uh, 28, Salaki, and verse 9. Let's read. This is the book of Isaiah chapter 28 and verse 9. It reads, For all the table are full of vomit. Read it again. For all the tables, Isaiah chapter 28 and verse 9. The book of Isaiah 28 and 9. Whom shall he teach knowledge? Read. And whom shall he make to understand doctrine? Who's going to be able to understand doctrine, teaching? Read. Them that are weaned from the milk. Underline the, the word weaned and also underline the word the milk. Go on. And drawn from the breast. To be drawn from the breast means it has to come from the source. Not any source. Not any individual. The source. Khan? Khan. All right. Uh, John 3.3. 3. Let's quickly go there. Who can get this milk? Who can be weaned? Notice... It is in slavery that they made our people feed their children with our milk. Come Because they knew our milk made their children stronger. Come You scorn us, you hate us, you revile us, but you know there's something in our milk, in our DNA, that makes us stronger than you, and you want that for your children, your generation. Hmm? Come Watch this. Read. Gen say, it's in John 3 and 3. Say John 3 and 3. Jesus, uh, Yahweh Shah answered and said unto him, Read. Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Go on. Except a man be born again. Be what? Be born again. So in order to be born again, you have to go through a process that's pretty much going to make you like a baby again. To be born again means starting from zero. Whatever you knew before is now deleted. This is a fresh start. So he says, uh, Yehoshai answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, covenant. Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born again, read, He cannot See the kingdom of Yahweh. Read. Nicodemus said unto him, How can a man be born when he is old? Go on. Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb? Into where? Into his mother's womb. Into his mother's womb. Go on. And be born. And be born. See that? Please follow carefully because it's going to make sense. Deuteronomy chapter 11, 1. Let's go. Deuteronomy chapter 11 and verse 1. Let's read. This is the book of Deuteronomy chapter 11, 1 and 1. Now let's see what it's speaking about. 11 and 1 Deuteronomy. Let's read. This is the book of Deuteronomy 11 and 1. Therefore shall thou, therefore thou shalt love the Lord thy Yahweh. Love the Lord thy Yahweh. Go on. And keep his charge. And keep his charge. Whatever his commandments are. Come. Read. And his statutes. And his statutes. Read. And his judgments. Go on. And his commandments. And what? And his commandments. And his commandments. Go on. Always. Some ways. Always. So it says always. Come. Watch this now. Read on. And know ye this day, for I speak not with your children. Go on. Which have not known, and which have not seen 
the chastisement of the Lord, Go on. your Yahweh. His greatness, his mighty hand. His what? His mighty hand. All right, let's drop that now. Jump to 19. Here we go. Deuteronomy 19. No. I said jump to 19, which is oh, I'm sorry. verse 19. Come. And ye shall teach them your children. Who? Your children. Your children. Remember what we what we discovered in, in, when we were back in Isaiah. Those that are weaned on the milk. Right? Uh, then we go to John chapter 3 and 3. It speaks about you must be born again. You uh, must again. You must become like a child. Are you understanding this? Because if you're not, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll work it out for you. Uh, right? And, and then Nicodemus was a grown man, a, a, a principal of the law. He turns out, how can a man be born again? Must he enter again into his mother's womb? But what it's speaking about is that even if you are old, I'm old, gray hair everywhere. What's this now? Can I go and be born again? It means I've got to erase my thoughts of what I understood from Christianity. Begin to learn all over again. And that's why many, especially those who are in high positions of Christianity, we don't want to leave it because I'm not going to start again for no one. Huh. I work too hard to become a bishop or pastor and whatever it is. Many are like that, not realizing that they are crucifying themselves. Huh. So watch what it says. 19, read it again. This is the book of Deuteronomy 11 and 19. And ye shall teach them your children, go on, speaking of them when thou sittest in thine house. When you sit in your home, go on. And when thou walkest by the way, go on. When thou liest down, go on. When thou risest up. So that means you've got to teach your children all the time. You wonder why your child grows up to a certain age and then depart? It's because either they weren't listening. Or they just didn't care. And if they didn't care, that's okay. That means the most I just didn't choose your children. And your children are going to stray and be caught up with the other two-thirds. Now, for most parents, it's very sad to, to, to but the will of the Lord is the will of the Lord. Come on? Come on. All right, from here, come with me, please, to First Peter. First Peter. So, sir, first Peter, uh, first Peter chapter two, sir. Yes, indeed. <clears throat> first Peter chapter two, and let's begin, if you please. Yes, sir. Begin at one. This is the book of First Peter, chapter one, two, and one. It reads. Pay attention, doctor. Pay attention. Let's read. Wherefore. Line aside all malice. Now see, now it's teaching us the things that hinder spiritual growth. Hinder the progression of the Spirit of God in your life. Read. And all guile. So all malice and all guile. Read. And hypocrisies. And all hypocrisies. And envies. And envies because people do envy you. They want who you or what you have. Read. And all evil speaking. And all evil speaking. Now watch this now. Verse 2. Read. As newborn babes. Ah. We're back to the baby thing again. You have to become like a newborn babe. Read. Desire the sincere milk. See that? Wean from the milk. That we read in Isaiah chapter 28 and 9. So, did, so you must have a desire. There are those who want to become, who become big, but they have no desire for the milk. What is the milk? This book. You must have a desire to want this milk, to drink this milk. And so it says, read it again from the top, from verse 2. Verse 2. And newborn babes desire the sincere milk. Of the word. See, so now it's making it very clear. This book is the milk, which is the word. And that's how you can receive it when you are a babe. Later, it changes from milk 
to meet. So then it says, read, that ye may grow thereby. So if you don't have milk, you can't grow. That's why some do not grow. To grow, you have to keep taking that milk, receiving that teaching, and it starts to, it starts to make your bones strong, your teeth better, your eyes whiten. The clarity of your hearing becomes more pronounced. You're able to stand by yourself. And hold something and grip it. That's why babies, after a certain certain point in their life, after a certain feeding, they can hold things and pull their own body weight up. Mm -hmm. They're gonna get stronger. And that is how you become with this word. Hmm? Uh -huh. And then watch what it says. It, it says that that ye may, may grow, grow thereby. thereby. Read. If so be ye have tasted that. The Lord is gracious. So in order to taste this, you begin to see how gracious he is. Does that make sense to you so far? Hmm? Go ahead. All right. From here, let's go back to Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy 29 and 29. Again, I say you have to pay attention to the reading and nothing else. Deuteronomy chapter 29 and 29. This is the book of Deuteronomy 29 and 29. Let's read. The secret things belong unto the Lord. Stop. Notice what it says here. It's now saying there are secret things of the Most High God. That means he has some things that are secret that he keeps for you. Hmm? But not all things that are secret he gives to you. Because you can't handle it just yet. But watch what it goes on to say. Read. Read it, read it again from the top. Deuteronomy 29 and 29. The secret things belong unto the Lord our Yahweh. Go on. But those things which are revealed. So now it's letting you know. The things that are revealed, what are they for? Read. Belong unto us. Belong to us. Go and on. And to our children. And for, to our children for how long? Forever. Forever. Read on. That we may do all the words of this law. See, so you have to do all the words of this law. Remember the book that you have in front of you, that, you, that you've been taught, the, the name uh, Bible, which is Biblos in the Greek. What is it called? What did our forefathers call it? No, what, what do they what, what do they call this book? Uh, yes, well. It's called scripture. Okay. This is called scripture. It's not called Bible. We call it Bible because we've been taught, programmed to do that. But that's Greek. Okay. And again, you heard me say, I'm trying to even teach myself to, to, to get myself back to using what my forefathers used and not what those that had us in captivity, a program that's the call it. So then it says, uh, let's, um, hmm, what else? right, 29, 29, let's read it again. Deuteronomy 29 and 29. The secret things belong unto the Lord our Yahweh. Go on. But those things which are revealed. Which are what? Which are revealed. Which are revealed, go on. Belong unto us. Belong to us. Go on. And to our children. And to our children. Forever. Forever. Go on. That we may do all the words of this law. All the words of this law. So when people say that the law has been done away with, I, I have no clue where they would get that from. Did you have a question, sir? Oh, yes, sir. Go ahead. Because we, we, we let off with second answers. So, like, there was secrets that, uh, that when he's referring to the secret things, he's talking about the things that he said, this is not for them to know yet. Come on. And then, uh, and then the things. That's why he turns around. And he says these things that will reveal the things that I can tell you. This is what you can pass on. You. Correct. Remember, we 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 also dealt with the fact that Paul. There are certain things that Paul could say and Paul could not say. Huh. There are certain things that John could say and John could not say, because there is a limit to what we can receive where we are, because we are not all on the same level. In John's case, he said, I heard things that were inexpressible. Right. 
and, and Paul said, which was not lawful. Yes, sir, what you got? Yes, Moses knew because remember, uh, even though he knew it, he was charged not to say anything. Let's go quickly to Sirach chapter 39. Sirach chapter 39. Quickly for me, please. Yes, sir. Begin reading from verse 1. This is the book of Sirach, chapter 39 and 1, on page 94. Read. But he that giveth his mind to the law of the... Got to slow it down a bit now, because this is, this is punyant. Yes, sir. Let's read it. But he that giveth his mind... Giveth his thinking, his thoughts, his daily meditation to what? To the law. Go on. Of the Most High. Read. And is occupied... In the meditation thereof. Yeah, it's occupied in the meditation, meaning you think on scriptures throughout the day. And how do you do that? You think of some scripture. Among the brothers, we have a scripture that's put out every day, every evening, for the brothers to read in the morning. And so that would be a scripture that you can meditate on for the whole day to allow your, your soul. But, but again, we had, we had to assign a brother to do it and to continue to do it regardless. Now, the brother stopped once. I said, why you stop? Then he got it right and started to do it again. And guess what? Every morning, we have morning manna among the brothers. Now, that's a hint, but I'll leave it there. Go on. Will seek out the wisdom of all the ancients. See? So when you meditate, it says, We'll seek out the wisdom of all the ancients. Read. And be occupied in prophecies. And you will be occupied in prophecies. Read. He will keep the saying of the renowned, renowned men. Men that are our forefathers who stood for the word prophets etc. Patra, etc. Read. And where subtle parables are. And wherever the, the subtle or the subtle proverbs, uh, sorry, proverbs that give us greater knowledge and greater understanding. Read. He will be there also. Read. He will seek out the secrets of grave sentences. Read. And be, converse, and be conversant in dark parables. In dark parables. Read. He shall serve among the great men. He will what? Serve among the great men. Go on. And appear before princes. Now, that's the serving among great men. That's where we fall short, some of us. You don't know who the man is that you're serving. You don't know who the woman is. And in serving with a righteous spirit, Things are going to be accounted unto you as a blessing. This is so rudimentary. But let's read. Read it again from the top. Yes, sir. This is a Sirach 39 and 4. He shall serve among great men. Read. And appear before princes. And that servitude will open opportunities for you. Read. He will travel through strange countries. And it will open doors for you to travel to places you've never been to before. Mm, interesting. I know this that we're reading right here to be an absolute perpendicular fact. Read. For he has tried the good and the evil among men. Read. He will give his heart to resort early to the Lord. That made him, and will pray before the Most High. And do what? Pray before the Most High. Go on. And will open his mouth in prayer, and make supplication for his sin. I hope we do. Read. When the great Lord will, 
He shall be filled with the spirit of understanding. Of what? Understanding. Understanding. We can only get understanding when we put ourselves in a position to receive understanding. Read. He shall pour out wise sentences. Go on. And give thanks unto the Lord in his prayer. In what? In his prayer. In his prayer. Read on. He shall direct his counsel. So your counsel will be directed. You will make a decision. And you wonder why. I don't know why I, 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 went, I did this instead. I, I've, got no, I've got no clue why I did that. But that's the most high God directing you uh -huh. when you least expect it. That's why you, don't let people ever entrap you into, into boxes that they feel you belong to. Uh -huh. Ever. Uh -huh. Because what the Most High has for you is far beyond them. They see to the end of their finger. The Most High God looks into generations. Whew. That's heavy. But anyway, let, let, let's, let's go on. Let's read that verse 7 again. Verse 7. He shall direct his counsel and knowledge. Go on. And in his secrets shall he meditate. Shall he um, meditate. Powerful, isn't it? Uh, Absolutely powerful. If our time, time did allow us, I would dig a little bit, little bit uh, deeper, but time does not allow us right now. So, does that make sense to everyone? Uh -huh. are, are you understanding that? Let's run back to Genesis. Let's go back to Genesis, where all this started. Now, the, the title of this, by the way, is um, Can These Bones Live? The Living Soul, or A Living Soul. All right, let's go to Genesis, if you please, chapter 2, verse 7. It's the book of Genesis, chapter 2, and verse 7, and it reads, And the Lord, Yahweh, formed man of the dust of the ground. So he formed you from what many preachers say, you're, you're formed from nothing. You're made from nothing. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. You're valuable. So he forms you from something that carries value with it. What does the earth have? Go ahead. Soil. Oh, it had what? Soil. Yeah, soil. And then what did you say? Minerals. So there's minerals in the soil. All right? So that then means you are made up or you are a body of minerals. You have iron in you. You have silver in you. Zinc in you. Prostrate within you. What else do we have? Can anyone else? Calcium. Huh? Calcium. Calcium. Sodium. Magnesium, zinc, what is that zinc? Potassium, you've already got that. Lodine or lodine, depending on how you, how you pronounce it. No, I Lodine, L-O-D-I-N-E. Right. So, so these are the things that are in you. So. You, you are, and remember, there are, there are substances, there, there's dark matter in you that makes up certain parts of your body that makes you strong, that even the scientists don't understand. And, and, and then he covers all of you with a dark matter called melanin. You're not just simply dirt. And then... And then let's read on what it says. And breathe into his nostrils. And he did what? Breathe into his nostrils. And he breathed into his nostrils. Let's go to Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 7, please, and 22. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 7 and 22. Real, real quickly, please, so I do need you to move with this. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter uh, 7 and 22. Let's read. This is the book of... The, the wisdom of Solomon, chapter 7 and 22. For wisdom 
Which is the worker of all things. Which is what? The worker of all things. The worker of all things. Go on. Taught me. For in her is an understanding spirit. A what? Understanding spirit. So that means that you must have a spirit of understanding. Read. Holy, one only, manifold, subtle, lively, clear, undefiled, plain, not subject to hurt. Not subject to what? To hurt. Not subject to what? Hurt. hurt. <laughs> Read. Loving the thing that is good, quick. Go on. Which cannot be let it. Ready to do good. Ready to do what? Good. Ready to do good. Interesting. Jump to verse 25. Verse 25. For she is the breath. Hold it. She is what? The breath. Go on. Of the power of Yahweh. The breath of life. The breath of life. Read. And a pure influence flowing from the glory of the Almighty. Go on. Therefore can no defiled thing fall into her. Fall into her. So... Whilst the Most High is working on you, you can't stay the, the same ragamuffin that you were. You get better. You become improved. The man I knew you were five years ago is a man that was, is now lost because you can't remember that man versus the man that you are supposed to be today. The woman that you were five years ago is not the woman that you should be five years later. Uh -huh. If you're still the same, then there's something rotten at your core. And you need to do something about it. Because the Bible lets us know that, that we become a new creature. Are you going to make God a liar? You can't make him a liar. It's as simple as that. You can't? Now, again, because of time, uh, let's go, if you please, to Proverbs chapter 7, verse 2. Proverbs chapter 7 and verse 2. This is the book of Proverbs chapter 7 and verse 2. It reads, Keep my commandments. Do what? Keep my commandments. Keep my commandments. Go on. And live. So, we have missed this. Many of us have read this and missed it. He says, keep my commandments and live. That means if Adam had kept the commandments, he would live forever. Uh -huh. But because he followed his wife, he broke the commandments. And when he broke the commandments, he was now subject to death. Uh -huh. Letting us know that if you keep the commandments, you have eternal life. Come on, come on. That's heavy right there. Come on. Read it again. Keep my commandments and live. And do what? And live. And live. Go on. And my law as the people, as the apple. As what? As the apple. Go on. Of thine eye. Because you, an eye is precious. An eye is something that's sensitive. That's why it has the ability to flash and to close quickly. Because anything that's coming to harm it, it has to shut off the outer world from the things that's going to affect the inner world. Interesting. Is that not what it says? Yes, sir. All right, hold it there. Jump to Proverbs chapter 4 and 4. It's the book of Proverbs chapter 4 and verse 4. It reads, He taught me also. So, you have to be taught. You have to be teachable. Don't think because you've read a few scriptures you think you're there. You're not there yet. He says what? He taught me also. Read. And said unto me. Read. 
Let thine heart retain my word. Retain what? My words. My words. Colon. What does colon mean, uh, my son? Oh, me. Yeah. Oh, praise the be, sir. Colon means it's a statement of fact. It's statement of fact. All right. So yes, then it says what? Keep my commandments. Do what? Keep my commandments. Go on. And live. That confirms what you just read a moment ago in the previous, which is Proverbs chapter 7 and 2. Because if you keep the commandments of, and live, it means if you keep his commandments, then you, you're, you're keeping yourself where you ought to be to be to, or to have eternal life. He said, keep his commandments and live. Forsake them, die. Isn't that something? Mm -hmm. All right, from here, we're, we're, beat, uh, we're fighting against the clock. Ephesians chapter 2 and 1. Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 1, if you please. This is the book of Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 1. Let's read. And you has he quickened who were dead. Read, in, read it again. And you has he quickened. Read who were dead in trespasses and sin. We were dead in our trespasses and our sins. So he has quickened us. He has made us alive. Con? Con. Go ahead, sir. So this is the breath that was poured over the bones like in Jeremiah. Correct. Because remember, the reason why we ended up dead is because we weren't keeping his commandments. <laughs> so here he says, and you hath he quickened who were dead in trespasses and what? Sins. And sin. Right? That means we were disobedient. Now, let's see why we were be disobedient. Read verse 2. Verse 2. Where in time past. Where in the past. Go on. Ye walked according to the course of this world. You walked according to the course of this age. You lived and you became what this world was. You had to act like them, cuss like them, dance like them, live uh, like them. Uh, Everything that the world did, you did. That's why it says in times past. I hope it's times past. Hello. Hello. Uh, no, we're no quiet just then. But let's read. According to the prince of the power. See, the prince of the power of what? Of the air. Of the air. Read. The spirit that now worketh in no, the notice, truth. Notice, it says the spirit that now worketh. It now worketh what? In the children of disobedience. The children of disobedience. Jeremiah chapter 7. Jeremiah chapter 7, and let's read verse 25. The book of Jeremiah chapter 7 and verse 25. 7 and 25. Since the day... Hold it, wait for me. That's my excuse to, get to let everybody else catch up. But go on. Since the day that our fathers came forth out of the land of Egypt Go on. unto this day, I have even sent unto you all my servants, the prophets. All of my servants, the prophets. You see, you don't know what they look like. Mm -hmm. And that's why it, it's very um, sad that sometimes we become overly familiar with the servants of God. Overly familiar. So he says, he said, all he, 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 that I have sent unto you, all my servants, the prophets, read. Daily rising up early and sending them. And sending them. Hmm. Interesting. Read on. Yet they hearken not unto me. Yet what? Hearken not unto me. Yet you still fail to listen. Read. Nor incline their ear. Nor uh, did you allow your ears to be inclined unto you. 
Read. But hardened their neck. But hardened their neck. Read. They did worse than their fathers. Now, how is it possible that we now do worse than our fathers? Mm -hmm. Our forefathers did some stuff now. But we are now worse than them. Read. 27. Therefore, thou shalt speak all these words unto them. Read. But they will not hearken to they thee. What? They will not hearken to thee. Read. Thou shalt also call unto them, but they will not answer thee. They will what? They will not answer thee. Read. But thou shalt say unto them, This is a nation that obeyeth not the voice of the Lord their Yahweh. Now you understand why we are in the fire. Because we're still doing that today. Read. Nor receiveth correction. And they hate. They hate to receive correction. Men, women, hate to receive correction. They tell them that you should do thus, you should do this, and blah, blah, blah. They don't want to hear it. So then, who would you rather? Would you rather that the Almighty himself come and tell you? Because if he does come and tell you, you know it's too late, right? You're done at that point. The whole purpose of allowing his prophets to get to you is, is that's where you hear Christ, those in Christianity. What's the word that they use in regards to that? Uh, Dustless. What is the word they use for that? You hear it in Christianity all the time. I'm all right because I'm living under grace. And you know they use that as a great excuse. Grace, grace. So let's read the latter quote on that. Yes, sir. Truth is perished. Truth is what? Is perished. Go on. And is cut off from their mouth. So they become liars. Jeremiah chapter 5 and 25. Jeremiah chapter 5 and 25. Let's go. Your iniquities have turned away these things. Your, so your sins, iniquities, have turned away these things. Go on. And your sins have withholden good. Read. Good things from you. So the, th you, the things that the Most High God wants to bless you with. And you, and you think you're blessed right now. You're not blessed. If you were to really allow yourself to be submitted totally to the Most High God, the blessings of the Most High would be unfathomable in your life. So what does he say? Verse 26. For among my people are found... Hold it. What did he say? Um, okay, go back over 25. No, read it, read it again. For among my people, for among my people, are found wicked men. They're wicked. They're wicked. But I'm not wicked. I mean, I haven't done anything. I haven't killed anyone. Wicked is disobedience. Don't have to kill anyone to be wicked. Just disobey. You're wicked. Uh -huh. Read. They lay wait, as he that set its snares. Go on. They set a trap. They catch men. They catch men. Because they always want to get the man who's got that word in his mouth. Uh, Stop him. Mm -hmm. Hosea. Chapter 13. Go there now. Hosea. Chapter 13. Begin at verse 1. This is the book of Hosea. Slide, down, slide down a little bit. I, yes, sir. I, I, I want everything. I want these brothers, I want them at, at that book. I don't want them looking at a page and it's not there. So what have we got? Hosea chapter 13 and 1. Let's read. When Ephraim spake trembling. So Ephraim had enough gumption to recognize that he has to be meek before the Most High God. What did it say he did? He exalted himself in Israel. 
So he exalted himself in Israel. So you showed yourself off. Go on. But when he offended in Baal, Go on. he died. He died. So the most high God gives you grace, but you messed up in Baal, and Baal, you're dead now. You see the difference? You give your you give your substance to, to something that uh, that's it's the end of it. It's really your your demise. And the Most High God, he, he wants you to so turn around, but and, and he gives you a little bit more grace, a little bit more grace, a little bit more grace. But you play him. Isn't it funny? It's it's like our people who uh, have you noticed our people. Um, uh, we will speak to one another in the most venomous way. But when it comes to someone who is, let's say, Edomite, we watch how we speak. We even choose our words carefully. Am I lying or am I making this up? Or can anyone relate? Um, yet we speak to our own terrible. Let's read it again. This is Hosea chapter 13 and 1. When Ephraim spake trembling, he exalted himself in Israel. But when he offended in Baal, he died. He died. All right. So, um, where do I want to go? Read again, sir. Hosea chapter 13 and 1. When Ephraim spake trembling, he exalted himself in Israel, but when he offended in Baal, he died. He did what? He died. He died. Go to chapter 4. Same book. Come. Begin at verse 6. This is Hosea 4 and 6. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. I think you need to read that again. My people are destroyed for lack of of knowledge Go on. because thou has rejected knowledge you have done what? rejected knowledge now the word knowledge here it is also into use uh, interchangeable with the word instruction we have rejected being instructed so it says my people have what have rejected knowledge they have rejected knowledge go on I will also reject thee. I will do what? Reject thee. I will also reject you. Go on. That thou shalt be no priest. That you will be what? To, no priest to me. You will not be uh, moving up to the Most High God. Read. Saying thou hast forgotten the law of thy God, Yahweh. You have forgotten what? The law of thy Yahweh. Go on. I will also forget thy children. I will also forget your generations. Go on. As they were increased, so they sinned against me. And so as they increased, they do what? Sin against me. They sinned against. That's heavy, isn't it? Come. All right. Uh, time is flying. So let's go to Ezekiel chapter 47 and 1, please. Ezekiel 47 and 1. Let's go. Hmm. All right. Ezekiel chapter 47. Let's read verse 1. This is the book of Ezekiel 47 and 1. Listen carefully now. Afterward, he brought me again unto the door of the house. Go on. And behold, waters issued out from under the threshold of the house eastward. Read. For the forefront of the house stood toward the east. Go on. And the waters came down from under from the right side of the house. Go on. At the south side of the altar. Go on. Then brought he me out of the way of the gate northward and led me about the way without unto the other gate by the way that looketh eastward. Go on. And behold, there ran out waters on the right side. So, uh, this is quite deep. Um, 
taking you from, I'm going to take you from one kingdom and I'm going to put you back in your own kingdom. Why does it say that? How do we know it? Isaiah, tell me, why does it say that? Oh, how do we know that? Because, I mean, it's, it's plainly there, but I want to see if you know why. Verse 2. Verse 2. Then brought he me out of the way of the gate northward, and led me about the way without unto the other gate by the way that looketh eastward. Go on. And behold, there ran out waters on the right side. All right, so. Grace and peace. Grace and peace. Um, Make it short, sir. Okay, he's, he's, he's letting us know he, he brought us out of the gate northward. That's going towards the, that's like, uh, he's, and he's doing the Ephraim. So he's bringing us, he's bringing, he's, and well, really, I'm, 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 he's also talking about the southern kingdom also here, if I'm not mistaken. And, uh, um, and the waters that are coming out of the word. So he's, uh, uh, He's, he's, it's like we're being translated from uh, the kingdom of darkness into his kingdom, being okay. brought back to our I told you to make it short. And uh, when, you, when you make it too verbose, you, you, you lose the essence of it. I just want you to go outside. And so let's read what it says. It says, I'm going to take you from the north, and I'm going to lead you to the east. Where do we come from? We come from the east. We come from where? We come from the east. We come from the east. Like we're here now. Mm -hmm. This is the north. Mm -hmm. And he's bringing us back to where we belong. All right. So where do we belong, sir? Uh, back in our land. Back in and Jerusalem. where is our land, sir? Uh, over back in Jerusalem, which is in the east. What? Which is in That's all I need you to say for me. Oh. Make, 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 oh. Right. Intellects. All right. So now let's read verse 3. Read. Verse 3. And when the man that had the line in his hand went forth eastward, go on. He measured a thousand cubits, go on. And he brought me through the waters. The waters were to the ankles. Were to the ankles. Now, who could tell me what that means? I've taught this before, so I <laughs> know you know. Let, 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 let's use what the newer sisters. All right, Rebecca, what does that? The level of understanding. The level of understanding. All right, so the level of understanding was at the ankles. But read on. Forward. Again, he measured a thousand Go on. and brought me through the waters. Mm -hmm. The waters were to the knees. Were what? Were to the knees. Go on. Again, he measured a thousand and brought me through. The waters were to the loins. Were to the loins. The, the waters represent your wisdom and understanding. Please make a note. Now, again, um, I'm, I'm, I can't say I've been robbed of time because I was given sufficient time. It's just that sometimes teaching does what it does. All right, let's, let's bring that all together. Go to uh, Baruch chapter 4 and verse 1. Baruch chapter 4 and 1, if you please. This is the book of Baruch. It's on page 105. Read one, this is the book of the commandments of Yahweh. Go on. And the law that endureth forever. So it endures forever. Go on. All they that keep it. All they that keep it. Read, shall come to life. You will come to life. That's what was promised to those. Can these bones live? Prophesy to these bones. And if they will hear it, and if they will hear and not forbear, they will indeed be quickened and be made alive again. And as the scripture says, this is the book of the commandments of the Most High uh, and the law that endureth forever. So if the law endureth forever and you receive the law, then what do you do forever? Okay. You endure also. And then it says, all they that keep it shall what? Come to life. It shall come to life. Read. But such as leave it shall die. If you leave it, you will die. Uh, does that make sense to you? So yes, it does. All right. From here, let's read the next verse. In fact, jump, uh, jump down 
Don't want to do it. Yeah, time won't allow me to do that. So let's look, let's leave that. Uh, let me see, let me see, let me see, let me see. No, let's leave that. It may take us now. Let's go to structure of the 19 and 19. So go to scripture. So rock, chapter 19 and 19. This is the book of Sorat, chapter 19 and 19, on page 81 in the Apocrypha. The knowledge of the commandments of the Lord is the doctrine of life. So you're, you're beginning to see now that there was no exaggeration. There was no stretching of, the, of this truth. It is what it is because it tells us that if you keep this, you are indeed uh, making for yourself a life of eternity through keeping the word. The knowledge of the commandments of the Lord is the doctrine of life. Read. And they that do things that please him Go on. shall receive the fruit of the tree of immortality. There it is. It's telling you clearly. Hmm? There Read on. The fear of the Lord is all wisdom. Read. And in all wisdom is the performance of the law. Read. And the knowledge of his omnip omnipotency. If a servant say to his master, I will not do as it pleaseth thee. Read. Though afterward he do it, he angereth him and nourishes him. The knowledge of wickedness is not wisdom. Neither at any time the counsel of sinners prudent. See that? So you, you have to be very mindful of yourself. Right? There's a fine line. Let's certainly take us home with this. Go to Luke chapter 10. Luke chapter 10. Luke chapter 10, 25. This is the book of St. Luke, chapter 10 and verse 25, it reads, And behold, a certain lawyer stood up and tempted him, and, did what? and tempted him, Go on. saying, Master, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? Go on. He said unto him, What is written in the law? What is what? What is written in the law? What is written in the law? So now he's telling you straight, if you want to have eternal life, what is written in the law? Read. How readest thou? And he answering said, Thou shalt love the Lord thy Yahweh. Go on. With all thy heart. Go on. And with all thy soul. And with all thy strength. And with all thy mind. And thy neighbor as thyself. As thyself. Jump back up to verse 25. And behold, a certain lawyer stood up and tempted him, saying, Master, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? So the game, the question, we're back visiting that. What shall I do to have eternal life? Then what does he say? Read the next verse. He said unto him, what is written in the law? What is written in the law? It, it, there's no argument, is there? No. Go ahead, sir. This defines imagination. That it, it absolutely, I mean, because you read this, how can you not say that the law, how can you say the law is done away with when you ask him? What is written in the law is right there. Right. <laughs> so it, it's, and I don't know how you, you read this time and time again and you still don't get it. Uh, just, be, just before, uh, can you hold that? I just want to finish this verse so that um, the lesson will be, come to a conclusion. Then I'll take questions. Revelations chapter 14 and 12. Revelations chapter 14 and 12. Let's read. Revelations chapter 14 and verse 12. Here is the patience of the saints. Read that again. Here 
is the patience of the saints. Here is the patience of the who? The saints. The saints. Read. Here are they that keep the commandments. That, that do what? Keep the commandments. So we have to keep the commandments. So even if they say, well, the Lord is done away with, here, John is not telling you. You have to keep the commandments, and you have to do that along with what's coming up next. Let's read. Of your how. Of what? Of your how. Read it again. Here is the patience of the saints. Go on. Here are they that keep the commandments of Yahweh and the faith of Yahweh Shai. The faith of Yahweh Shai. So if, if anyone says, well, you don't believe in Jesus, you don't believe in Jesus then. Well, we do believe in Jesus, as you call him. Because if we, if we, if we don't have faith in him, we can't get to the Father. Because he's the door, and if you you can't, if you try to go through the window, you're a thief and you're a robber. You can only use the door, and your house is that door that leads both to life and access to the Father. Come on? Come on. So, um, all right, any questions? Any questions? You had your question, uh, uh, Sister D? Go ahead. Questions online as well, ma'am. To anyone online, have any questions? Or this is a t teaching, truthfully, that that can go on for a lot longer. But we obviously cut it short for time purposes. But it's important that we recognize that that we can live. We are. Some of us are still in the Valley of Dry Bones because that's what America is, it, that's what America represents. Because the people that were alive uh, in this country, when it was called Astaroth or called Turtle Island, they were alive, but they were killed through smallpox, through liquor, through poisons, and nothing has changed. But what they destroyed, the Indians who who were our brother who are our brothers um, with drugs of liquor now it's now narcotics. Nothing has changed. They're still continually trying to kill. But what we have to be aware of is that we are killed because we've lost our wisdom. Keep the law, statutes, and commandments in tunes us to what the Spirit is saying, so we know what the enemy is trying to do. 
There was a part that in uh, that we've got, I was I tempted to read it, but it would have led us in another direction, which warns us that in keeping the commandments, it, it, it's it's putting us in a position where we know what our enemies are all about. But you can't know if, if you are allowing yourself to be led by them. See? For as many that are led by the Spirit, you can't. And you can only be led by the Spirit if you're following the law. You see, in Christianity, it talks that the Spirit was a, was a jolt, it was a movement, it was a, a running, it was a shouting. But it's funny how those same people with all of that would find themselves, you know, shacked up with someone a few weeks later, mm. or back on drugs. It doesn't make any sense to me. But when you follow his law, statute, and commandments, it tells you, you don't want to pierce your, your skin, put anything in there. It tells you how you ought to dress. It tells you how man ought to be. And if it's making us better than what we were, then it must be doing something to bring us life and not death. Come on. All right, to all our people who've been listening, I hope that you've enjoyed the teaching. I hope your, your hearts have been watered um, by the well that continues to flow life to us, which is in scriptures. I pray that you continue to tune in. And please, if you like this teaching, give us a thumbs up. Subscribe and give us a like. And please recommend it to your brethren, those who are still of the lost sheep of the house of Israel, who need to be pointed in the right direction. Tell your brethren, it's our duty to do that. That's why we, every week we come out, regardless of whatever's going on, you know, rain, cold, you name the weather, we, we're here. Unless the, the weather decides to cut us off, we're here. And we're here, why? Because we want to make sure that our brethren get this teaching, that their hearts can be uplifted and enriched. We look forward to seeing you again, to our brethren around the world, those in the UK, those in various parts of America. We want to say to you, Rakataya, how about Shema Shia, Pablaki, Yawashai, Selah.